A warm welcome to day three of the Sydney World Pride Human Rights Conference. My name's Mon Shafter, my pronouns are they and them, and I am delighted to be your host for today. Before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge that we're gathered on the land of the Gadigal people, who are the traditional owners, the traditional custodians of the Darling Harbour area where this building stands. I offer special thanks to Ross Fowler for conducting the acknowledgement of country today. It's a real honour for me to be part of this event. By day, I'm the content lead of ABC Queer, which creates stories and content aimed at younger LGBTQIA people. And by night, I'm the co-chair of 2010, which is a support service in New South, New South Wales that looks after younger LGBTQIA people. So I've got a, a pretty good, thank you, 2010. Um, yes. Um, so I've got a, a pretty good sense of, of many of the human rights challenges facing our younger generation. And this conference is a fantastic opportunity to shine a light on what needs to change to improve the lives of all LGBTQIA plus people in Australia and around the world, and to make that change together. Yesterday, on the second day of the conference, we turned to the stories, skills and strategies that we need to make progress. Our first panel of the day discussed bodily autonomy as a fundamental human right, while the balance of the morning was filled by panelists sharing stories of faith and discussing how, affirming, how an affirming future for gender diverse people can be created within religious communities. Our breakout sessions provided opportunities to build understanding and skills, and our afternoon sessions prompted great discussions on issues like pinkwashing. Today, we come together to focus our legacy for the future and what we must do in order to move forward. We'll zero in on the importance of special envoys, the impact of the global refugee crisis, and LGBTQIA representation in pop culture. I'm very excited to be hosting that panel. Our breakout sessions today build on the skills learnt in yesterday's sessions to equip us for making change in the future. But before we dive into the day, we've got a little bit of housekeeping that we'd like to uh, tell you about. Firstly, please ensure your phones are on silent. You don't want to be that person. Um, and of course, follow the instructions of staff if there is an emergency. We also have several accessibility provisions in place for people who need them. For those in the room, um, on the screens either side of me, uh, you'll find Auslan and international sign language interpreters, as well as live captioning. For those online, the streaming platform also has captions available. We also have audio description available for the first three rows of the auditorium through devices that can be collected at registration. Alternatively, you can use the Live Voice smartphone app, which is available to download from the Apple App Store and the Google Play App Store as well. If you're having issues with any of these accessibility provisions, the staff at registration can help you out. We also have live captioning for the main stage sessions in this Darling Harbour Theatre, and captions are available on screen for all, lime, all live stream sessions on the virtual platform. You might notice that some of the attendees today are wearing different lanyards. There's a, a sunflower lanyard, um, and that's worn by people with hidden disabilities so they can get the support they need. And if you see someone wearing a sunflower lanyard, they may need a little helping hand or perhaps just a, a little extra time. In addition to the yellow lanyards, uh, we, have, we have additional lanyards that says no photos written on them, um, and they're for attendees who would like to remain anonymous. So please be mindful that if you are taking photos, uh, so we can you know, respect everyone's privacy and security. So please be aware of um, you know, people's wishes here. For those joining us in person, uh, I'd like to encourage you to download the conference app if you haven't done that already. The app has the full agenda, the list of presenters and their biographies, and access to live chat and Q&A, so you can participate. Given the number of people joining us today, we want to ensure everyone has a voice, whether or not they're in the room. So questions can only be asked through the conference app or the online platform. You can vote for your favourite questions to make sure they reach the panel. It's very democratic, isn't it? Um, on the app, you can also find the Human Rights Conference Code of Conduct by clicking Resources. The Code of Conduct reflects our values of curiosity, listening, respect, diversity, integrity and courage. 
This Sydney World Pride Conference wants to create a safe space for everyone. If you need help resolving a conflict on site, please call or text the number on screen or email conference at sydneyworldpride.com with the subject line incident. And if you ever feel unwell or overwhelmed in a session, please know you can leave without judgment or explanation. That's perfectly okay. And if you need someone to talk about how you're feeling or just a, you know, a quiet space to, to chill out away from the crowds, uh, you can find our wellbeing lounge and counselling rooms up on level four. You can also find self-care tips and contact details for other mental health services in the back pages of your program. So I hope you feel you're in, you're in safe hands today. We also, in addition to all that, we have a, a space for quiet reflection and prayer and a First Nations space for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander attendees on level three. This conference is only possible because of the work and support of a number of key organisations. We'd especially like to thank our community partners, First Nations Advisory Committee and International Advisory Board. We are bringing